We're going to talk about differentiability today. What does it mean to say a function is differentiable at, at A? And how can a function fail to be differentiable? And, and finally, the relationship between differentiability and continuity. Okay? Well, here's the definition. A function is differentiable at A if f prime of A exists. But remember, f prime of A is a special type of limit. So when you're claiming a limit exists, you're really claiming the left side of the limit agrees with the right side. Okay? Anyway, so let, let's ask the question. This is a problem we looked at in part one of 2.8. Here's the function we, we looked at, and, and I'm, I'm asking the question, where is f differentiable? Well, the derivative, uh, we did a little bit of work in here, but the derivative turned out to be 2 minus x. Uh, and you can see that this is defined for all x, so we say this polynomial function is differentiable on the entire real line, negative infinity to infinity. And that's true with every polynomial function. How about this one? Where is this function differentiable? 2 over x plus 1. Uh, in part 1 we computed the derivative to be uh, negative 2 over x plus 1 squared. You certainly wouldn't say that the derivative exists at negative 1. So in, that, in this case, the, that's the answer. That, um, it, the function is differentiable for all x except x equal negative 1. Uh, here's when we started looking at, uh, um, in part 1, the, the, fu the absolute value function. Um, the graph looks like this, and we ask the question, where is this function differentiable? Uh, I think it's pretty clear that if x is a positive number, the derivative exists. In fact, it's 1, isn't it? And if x is any negative number, the derivative also exists. In that case, it's negative 1. The issue is really what happens at 0. And uh, f prime of 0 is this limit, right? Limit of the difference quotient. So what I just said was, well, let's break it up into, into cases. Since this is a piecewise function, why don't we look at each case separately? Um, if, um, if we approach 0 from the right, so, so we're at zero here, and if h is some positive number, uh, then then the the limit as h goes to zero from the right of f of zero plus h minus f of zero over h, isn't the absolute value of h equal to h if h is a positive number? So that's why we get this, and sure enough, the derivative is one, which isn't too surprising. If you have zero here and h here, the uh, slope of the secant line is one, so therefore so is the slope of the tangent line. But if you approach zero from the other side, uh, if h is a negative number, then isn't the absolute value of a negative number equaling to uh, the, the opposite of it? So the absolute value of h, if h is less than 0, becomes negative h. And the picture is clear, because if this is 0 here, uh, and h is a negative number, isn't the slope of the secant line negative 1? So therefore, when you take the limit, as h goes to 0, you get negative 1. And since the right and left uh, limits don't agree, we say the function is not differentiable. f prime of 0 does not exist. And that's true whenever you have a corner. Uh, whenever you have a function that has a corner like this, the, the slopes of the tangent lines have to be getting close to the same thing as, as h gets close to zero from both sides. Anyway, but that's a really good example of a function that's not differentiable. Let's look at some other examples. Here's, um, here's another way a function can fail to be differentiable. It's called a vertical tangent line. Um, the function is f of x equals x to the one-third. Trust me on this, the derivative becomes this, and you can see as as x approaches 0 from both sides of 0, doesn't this expression get close to positive infinity? It's sure enough you have a vertical tangent there, so you certainly wouldn't say the derivative exists there. But a vertical tangent is another example of how a function can fail to be differentiable. Uh, here's another one. This looks a lot like a corner. This is called a cusp. Look at the function f of x equals x to the 2 thirds. The derivative turns out to be this, 2 over 3x to the 1 third, and you can see as if x is a positive number, but getting close to zero, this is getting close to positive infinity. What's going on there, folks, is that the, the slope of the tangent line from the right is getting close to positive infinity here. If x is a negative number, then, then the derivative is, is very very negative, so you're, you're getting close to negative infinity here um, as, as, as x approaches zero from the left. So anyway, a cusp is, is like a really, 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 really bad corner. You can think of it that way. Anyway, um, Another way that a function can fail to be differentiable is, of course, uh, if you have a function that's not continuous, which you say this function is differentiable at x equals zero. And in fact, we have a theorem that, that actually says that. It relates the um, differentiability with con continuity. It says this. 
It says if a function is differentiable at a point, then it will be continuous there also. I want to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about logic here. And I encourage you folks to um, take a logic class. If you need some credits, uh, it's pretty fun and you'd be good at it. And it would, be, help, it would help your math as well. Anyway, uh, when you have what's called a, a conditional statement, like in this case, let's say it says if it's raining outside, then it's cloudy. Uh, that's a conditional. That means the same thing as what's called uh, the, contrap the contrapositive of that. Uh, what you do is if you switch the order here and negate each one, if it's raining outside, then it's cloudy, means exactly the same thing as if it's not cloudy outside, then it's not raining. We do that a lot in math, especially with theorems, so get used to that. But it does not mean the same thing as what's called the converse. That does not mean the same thing as if it's cloudy outside, then it's raining, does it? So don't get the converse mixed up. Let's, get, let's do another one. If you get an A in this class, you did the homework. That's a conditional statement. What would the contrapositive be of that? If you don't do the homework in this class, you won't get an A. These two things mean exactly the same thing. And the converse would be, if you do the homework, then you're guaranteed an A. And of course, we know that's not true. Anyway, let's, let's get back to this uh, theorem here. Uh, this says if a function is differentiable uh, at a point, then it will also be continuous there. So what would the contrapositive be of this? Wouldn't it say if a function is not continuous at the point, then it's not differentiable there either? Okay. So if, if, if you know that a function is not continuous at a point, then you know that it's not differentiable there either. Don't get it mixed up with the converse, though. It, it does not say that if a function is continuous at the point, then it will also be differentiable at that point. In fact, didn't we just look at three examples of functions that are continuous at a point but not differentiable there? Anyway, so if you're, if you're given a problem like this where you're, they give you a graph and they say, where is this function differentiable? Well, of course, you'd say all x except first rule out the places where the function is not continuous. It doesn't look like it's continuous at negative 4. And we have a vertical asymptote at 2, so let's rule that out. And then w once you rule out the places where it's not continuous, then also look at the places where we have either a corner, a cusp, or a vertical tangent. So at negative 1, it looks like we have a corner. Okay? We've got a minute or two left. Let me talk a little bit about this. How does your calculator compute the derivative? Well, your calculator uses this, n derivative. n derivative, the syntax is n derivative of y1, the derivative of the function y1, with respect to x, at x equal a, and with the change in x being h, the same h that we use with our regular difference uh, quotient. Now this looks a little different though, doesn't it? If you look at it this way though, these two things are equivalent. That's pretty easy to see actually. But this should look familiar. This is what we talked about in section 2.1. This, this is the average of the slopes of the secant before and after x equal a. If you look at the picture here. This, uh, look at the picture here. The, um, the slope of this line right here is f of a plus h minus f of a minus h divided by 2h. And that is equal to the slope of the secant line uh, from a to a plus h and from a minus h to a, the average of those two I should say. And the reason why that's a good idea is because isn't the slope of that line uh, a lot better as estimate to the slope of the tangent line? Anyway, th there's a problem with this though, and that is, in some cases, your, your calculator will give you an error. For example, if y equals the absolute value of x, uh, and you want to use your calculator to compute the derivative at zero, we know the answer is, uh, does not exist, right? That's what we talked about earlier. But your calculator will give you the wrong answer. Here, here's how we do it. We enter uh, math, and then go down to 8. That's where n, n derivative is, math and then 8. Hit enter. Now enter the absolute value function. Remember where that is? You go math, then you go over to num, absolute value of x, comma. We're taking the derivative of absolute value of x at x, or with respect to x, I should say, at x equals 0. Now you don't have to enter the h value on this. It ha there's a default there, so you, you don't have to enter that value. And your calculator give gives you 0. And so my question is, why does it give you the wrong answer? And here's a hint. Look at this picture here. Look at what your calculator is doing, and also think about the absolute value function near x equals zero. We've got to go. Bye-bye.